Hello, Animanian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to animate sex in Blender. So, I've already made this video. It's 3 hours and 11 minutes, and I've already edited it, I've done everything for it, but I can't upload it onto YouTube, because last time I tried that with my blowjob tutorial, um, it got deleted off YouTube, and I got a strike on my channel. So what I'm going to be doing instead is I'm going to be putting a download link, a Google Drive link, and a mega link um, in the video description below. So please download it from there. And yeah, so please download this video from the description below. It is 10.2 gigabytes. I know, I know that's huge, but it is 3 hours and 11 minutes. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I just really couldn't make it any small. Maybe I'll try making a 720p video and for other people who can't download such a huge file. Also, I'll be putting a download link to my blowjob tutorial with Ada because that got deleted off YouTube as well. I'm telling you it was a cube, but yeah, YouTube's YouTube and they, they said it was implied sex. So instead, what are we going to be doing today then? Uh, well, because since you stuck around, I will actually do some bonus kind of thing. <laughs> so today, what we're going to be doing instead is we're going to be doing a safe for work uh, render like this. So we're going to be rendering the Sombra and yeah, so we're going to be trying for this final result here. I do want to let you know of this NSFW Blender Discord. So please have a look in the description below and join this NSFW Blender Discord. There are currently 12,000 members on this Discord. It's crazy. So <laughs> I've just made this Discord and honestly, it's just been something so amazing. It's been an inspiration to me personally. Um, just learning from other NSFW artists and being able to uh, make friendships and yeah, just it's amazing to see how varied and vast uh, this NSFW community is and to learn from others who are making a living off of NSFW content. If you just scroll right down to this uh, channel right here called Tutorial Pack, there are a lot of useful tutorials and one more bonus thing is if you go down to Tutorial Order to Start here, this is if you just don't know where to start. Um, so yeah, so it's just a list of tutorials uh, in order, which uh, we've suggested that you might want to take and would help you through just the general process of learning uh, how to make NSFW 3D content. Okay, so what are the prerequisites for this tutorial here? So first things first, you want to go to Smut Base and Sombra. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to download Sombra, the Sombra model. So you want to click on this Ultimate Sombra Overwatch Smart Base. Okay, so Smart Base is basically the place for, for making, uh, for finding NSFW like models. So with genitals basically. And yeah, so we just want to scroll down right here. And I want to scroll down and I want to download this file right here. So this one is by METS. Okay, so this model right here is by METS. So we just want to download and you will just download the North America or Europe. You just click on here. So if you, the Europe servers don't work, just download the North America and vice versa. Um, but yeah, so I won't download it because I've downloaded it already. And the second thing we need for this um, tutorial is I'm just going to search up Open 3D Lab. Okay, so Open 3D Lab is the same. It's by the same uh, creator as um, Smart Base. So it's by Ganon Master. Uh, but this. Uh, thing here, Open3D Lab, is for downloading 3D environments and safe for work models. So these models don't have genitals, okay? So yeah, so you can see we have all these really cool props and environments. So 3D environments, you can get them from here. So there's lots of cool game environments that have been exported that are all available for download for Blender right here. So it's a really, really good resource. So the one I used was I pretty much just used uh, Overwatch. I just typed in Overwatch. And you can just see that they have a lot of really, really cool environments here. So you can just take your pick here. So what I picked here was the Paris library. So I just clicked on the Paris library right here. And yeah. So yeah. And I am just going to download this one right here. So just press download. And yeah, so just wait for it to download. And yeah, I won't download it because I've already downloaded it uh, already, okay. So, so after you've done that, basically you should have these two files here. And keep in mind, you really should 
uh, read the descriptions here because sometimes they can have requirements for these models. Uh, but in the, our case, there was no requirements, so it's all good. Okay, so we have these zip files here. So you can just go right click, show more options because I'm on Windows 11. And you can just go extract all if you just have Windows. Uh, but um, I'm using 7-zip here. So I'm just going to go 7-zip extract here. Okay. So let me just open up this Sombra model here. And I'm just going to allow execution. Because if you don't allow execution, you won't be able to see this uh, user interface right here. Let me just check if I'm still recording. Yep, I am. Cool. So <laughs> I, I just basically turn on the clothes because, um, yeah, this tutorial needs to be censored because it's on YouTube. But um, basically, you can just adjust like what skin you're using and what leggings. So for example, if I wanted to change to a different leggings, you can see that just from this user interface here, I can just uh, like just scroll, I mean, click and drag, and you can see that I'm getting a different legging. Okay, but I'm going to use the one here. You can do the same with a dress. And yeah, so also, just for the sakes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the Demon Hunter skin because I think it looks cool. So one more thing, I do also use this software called Pure Ref. So it's just a really easy way to use, to put your references. So you can just download and install it um, from, if you just search up Pure Ref, you don't need to donate anything, uh, but yeah, you can support the developers if you want to. If you just open up Pure Ref right here, so you can just have like some nothing here, right? And then you can just search up something on Google, right? So you can just have a look at this and you can just copy it, right click, copy and you can just um, paste it right here. Okay, so you can just control V, so you right click copy and paste it there. My second reference that I used for this image right here is this one here, okay? So I'm just gonna right click copy and I'm just going to paste it right here as well. And you can just move these images, resize them, do whatever you want, okay? So it's just a really, really handy reference that I used. Uh, let's just go, gen we'll make a new workspace here because I just don't like using, uh, the user interface that other people have used because yeah, it's just really annoying sometimes. So what we can do is we can just go plus, click on this plus icon right here, general, and we can go layout. So we make a new layout tab here. Okay, so now you can see that we can just, um... okay, so now you can see that we've got our general layout. Now what we can do is we can just click on this model here and let's just go back to object mode here. So. First things first is how do we find that user interface? If any time we need it, we have to just click on this skeleton here, okay? And we'll just go uh, to, we can, we can just, we'll see that we have this extra panel here. We just press N. So we'll click on this skeleton and we'll press N and you can see that we can just click on this METS R uh, panel here in the properties panel. And you'll see that you have this user interface here again. So if you wanna change any of the outfits or anything else, you can just change it like this. Okay, so um, let's start posing this model here. Click on this uh, skeleton here, and I'm just gonna go to pose mode. So if you don't see this pose mode option, just make sure you're clicking on the skeleton here. So I'm just gonna go object to pose mode here. Okay, so now we're just gonna try to replicate this. So I'm just gonna delete this camera here. I'm gonna make my new camera first. So I just want this camera to be looking straight on roughly. So I'm just gonna go shift A, uh, so if I just go into object mode, and I'm in object mode right now, I go shift A and I go camera. Okay, so shift A means to make a new object. And we just selected camera. So what we can do from here to easily move this camera around is I'm just going to go control alt numpad zero. So this brings the camera to your scene camera view. Okay, so now we can just press N to open up the properties panel and we go to this view tab right here. Okay, so this will, this is called view. So we just press N again to open up this properties panel and we press view. And we turn, uh, before we turn on camera to view, I'm just gonna zoom right in. So this is the easiest way to do it. So just make sure that basically you don't, you can still see the borders, uh, but you're zoomed in as close as possible. And then just press N and just uh, open up camera to view. Okay, so turn on camera to view. The reason why we're zooming in as close as possible is it's really hard to, to like set your camera if you can't actually see what's going on in the camera, if the camera is too small, okay? So that's why we make it as big as possible. So I am going to go for a look like, yeah, this is okay. I think something like this, um, because we just do need to decide the angle right now, because otherwise we won't be able to uh, check the pose, check it against the pose 
uh, right here, right? We won't be able to check it against this pose here. Okay, so let us get started. So I'm just going to start off by turning off camera to view. Make sure camera to view is off, otherwise you'll lose your camera position very easily. And I'm just gonna save a new file first. So I'm gonna go file, save as, I'm gonna call this Sombra Lighting Tutorial. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start rotating her hips. Okay, so she, basically, this is the hip bone here. Oh, sorry, the torso bone, we like to call it. The hip bone is this one here. This is the hip bone. Uh, but this is the torso bone here. So what we're gonna do is first of all, make sure you're in pose mode. So just click on the skeleton, go to pose mode, and we're going to just rotate it in the Z axis because she's looking this way in the actual image. Okay, so her body is kind of this way. And now we're gonna start posing her legs. Okay, so I'm just gonna pose her legs. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the weapons too much just right now. I'm just gonna focus on the legs. In fact, I might just move the weapons out of the way. So I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm just going to click on, yeah, so this one here is under here. So if I just close up these collections here and I am just going to close them all up. Okay, come on, <laughs> I have too many. In fact, what is a really good idea is if you just delete every outfit that you're not using because uh, it will take up memory in the scene no matter what in Blender. So you should uh, click on all these collections that you're not using and right click and you can just go uh, delete hierarchy if you're not using them, okay? In this case, I might use them so I'm not gonna delete them just yet but it is a good idea if you have some like uh, memory issues or your scene is really slow, you might wanna delete all these collections here. So you can just right click on a collection and you go delete hierarchy is the fastest way to do it. Okay, so we're gonna open up this Sombra Guns collection and I'm just going to hide this one from viewport, okay? And also from render, okay? So I'm hiding the skeleton, but you can see that this transloaded cater object, object is still here, right? So what can we do? Because we just hid the skeleton, okay? We didn't hide the mesh. So you need to open up this um, uh, skeleton here and find the child mesh right here. So this is the child of it. So we're just gonna hide that from viewport and hide it also from render. So make sure you turn off both the eye icon and the camera icon. Okay, so now we just have this one here and we can just move this, right? But that's actually wrong, don't do that. Okay, so don't move the mesh itself. If you're gonna move something with a skeleton, you can see that it has a skeleton right here. So if we just click on these bones here, please move the skeleton always. Otherwise you're gonna get some very weird things when you try to animate this skeleton because yeah. So you wanna always move the skeleton if, it, if a object has a skeleton. So I'm just gonna move this over here for the second, just so we can move it out of the way. Now let's keep posing this character. So I'm gonna click on the character skeleton. I'm gonna to go to pose mode. Okay, so let me just rotate this in the Z axis. So I just pressed RZ, okay? RZ to rotate in the Z axis. Uh, same with this one here this is even more RZ, okay? To rotate in the Z axis. And let's just move it back, okay? So we're using inverse kinematics right here. Okay, so inverse kinematics is where the child bone, uh, so this leg bone here is a child of the knee bone, right? Because if you think about it, uh, a skeleton, well, you have the leg bones, which are the parents, and these other ones, the, the bottom ones, are the children. But in this case, you can see that moving this child bone is moving the parent bones, which is why this is called inverse kinematics. Because normally it should be the other way around. Okay, so let's just start off by going like this. Okay, and now let's bring her hips down. So I'm just gonna press G just to move her hips down. I'm gonna look at the camera, okay? So that's the most important thing, okay? Because um, a key lesson in 3D is basically if the camera doesn't see it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, because you will just use all sorts of tricks. As long as it works, it looks like it, it works in 3D view, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna move these legs like this. Okay, let me just move this one backwards. I'm gonna have to move these hips around a little bit just to see how I'm gonna get this angle. So it's probably gonna be like this, okay. Okay, something like this. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about it right now. I'm just trying to get the general pose. And sometimes these can be a little bit annoying. Um, we can also move the, the target, the, the pole target. So this is the direction that the knee points towards, right? So we can move this and you can see the knee changes direction. 
Okay, so we're just gonna try and match this in the image. Okay, I'll move it around a little bit. Um, this leg should really be behind, but in this case, it doesn't really matter too much because we're not gonna really be seeing this leg in the camera view. But even that, so I still wanna just try to make it roughly. Okay, and keep in mind that we probably can't get like 100% of this, okay? We probably can't because the reason why is very simple, that the rigs that we have are just nowhere near as good as the rigs that they have, okay? So really, uh, these are not professional rigs. I know that, but it's okay. We can just try to get it as close as possible. These are just for, um, you know, SFW animation and they won't have all the deformation bones and all these things that will make a skeleton actually look good, um, which is okay. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, 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 okay. So we do want to, I'm just looking at it on my second screen as well. So I won't worry about that one just yet. I'm going to pose this one. So if you're gonna move the hands, just for this model here, you can see that, um, if we move the hand here, we're not moving the wrist bone here, okay? So we're not moving that one there. Wait, so this is a palm IK, interesting. Wait, let me just see if I can move. Actually, sorry. Yeah, so if you're gonna move this uh, arm here, please move the hand IK bone, so this one right here, not this bigger palm IK bone, okay? So just move this one here instead. Okay, so this hand IK. Wanna move this hand IK. Don't worry about that it's kind of breaking. That's okay, and I'm just gonna look at the camera because I'm, I'm really focusing on that. Don't worry about breaking. I'm just gonna put this one in the right pose here. So let me just grab the hand IK bone. So this one here, uh, this green one, and let me just rotate it correctly first. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going RZ to rotate it in the Z axis, RX to rotate it in the X axis. Okay, so we kind of have it here. RZ again, just so we can get that pose there, RZ. That's fine, don't worry about it breaking just yet because now I'm going to move the pole target here and this will fix pretty much all of it. Okay, so if we just move it this way here, I'm gonna move it underneath and we're also, and you can be like, you'll be like, how do we get this bend here? I can't get this super, super bendy kind of thing here. All you wanna do is you wanna move this hand closer. Okay, so a lot of the time, especially with this kind of uh, rig, you wanna just move this hand a little bit closer and you can see, boom, we have that bent. Okay, so that's kind of how you'll do it. Okay, so let me just wrap this. Okay. For now, I'm not gonna to worry too much. I'm just gonna get the general pose down. Something like that. Okay, that's okay. Cause I'm probably gonna be moving her hips around a little bit anyway. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. So I'm just going to move uh, this bone here. Okay, let's see, how is she? She's pretty much straight up. I'm looking at my other screen now, and I kind of, okay. I'm seeing if I need to rotate at all. Okay, that's okay. Okay, really this should be underneath here. So I'm just going to try to bend that knee even more. Um, yeah, this looks a little bit weird. So I'm just gonna try to get her like this. Okay. And like this, okay. Bend this knee a little bit that way. Okay, so it's important to always use references because references will save you a lot. Okay, so even just use like using a real life reference is the preference. So if you're just, even if you're just doing like a pose, you really want to see, because you can't remember. It's impossible to remember like exactly how a pose is. It's just, it's just not possible. So because you'll, you'll forget the details no matter how many times you see them. So just, Try to use a reference. Okay, so now I'm just going to get this one here. It's going to go RZ, RX, RY. Okay, to rotate it in the Y axis, RY. Okay, and I'm just going to try to put her arm around here. I'm going to also adjust her 
um, upwards. Okay, so she's going to be, because that's going to be the general pose here. And let us just throw this back. I'll go R, Y, R, X, R, Z. Okay, uh, yes, okay, looks good, looks good. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so now let me just rotate it in the, rotate this, nope. Let's try rotating, nope. <laughs> Let's try rotating this bone here, okay? So I'm just trying to rotate different bones. You can see that this looks really awkward if I try to rotate this bone in like any direction at all. Um, so I'm going to instead try to rotate this bone here. I'm gonna go R, X, because I want, I want her really R, Y maybe. I want her to be looking kind of like that. Because her eyes are kind of like that. Okay, looking good. That leg should really be out a lot more kind of annoys me what I can do here and so now that we're gonna kind of getting into here so let me just move her hips around a little bit you can see that it's really hard to kind of get her leg out like that so one way we could do it if we just wanted to match the reference for the top part is to go like this and that would kind of be okay because it kind of matches that reference there. However, um, you can go Rx as well, Rx to bend it, Rx to bend that way. And that can kind of work. Yeah, I'll probably just match it like this, even though in the reference, you actually can't see the other leg at all. Uh, R, oh my God, Ry, Rx. You can also try bending this in its local rotation. That can sometimes help. So Rx, so you can see that will just now bend it in its local rotation. And we can also look at it from different angles to see how it should be. So Rz, maybe it should look like this. Maybe it's backwards a little bit and this one's forwards a little bit actually. That might help out a little bit with the posing. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks a little bit more realistic if it's like that. Might bring a weight forward a little bit. Okay. So that's why I didn't kind of bother to pose the arms just yet because um, I do want to get this one right here first because this is going to be the most crucial part. Could also be the camera angle here but what we can also do is we can just open up the Mets rig thing and we can open up the deformation bones okay so this we can try different deformation bones it might be this one here so yeah you can see that now if we click, click select these two bones for the legs and we just press G okay so we can just move both of them at the same time but that's not really working so let me just select these two yep so these other two so this one and the gray one instead and if we just move these two, we can just move it, have that knee kind of pointing out as well as this leg behind her. And you want the pose to look like stable as well. So you, you want her to actually look like she's actually um, not gonna fall over at any moment. So, And you should always leave the knees just a little bit bent because if you go straight, it, especially in animation, it's going to snap a lot. So you want to keep a little bit of a bend no matter what with these IK skeletons. Okay, so let me just, yeah, whatever. We'll go like this, I think. Yeah, I won't bother with it too much. I think something like this will be okay. Okay, so now let's just pose these hands and yeah. We'll keep this 
fairly short. So I'll go R Z R X just so we can kind of have it matching the curve of her body. Okay, something like that. Okay, now wait, did I did I move the wrong bone there? I think I moved the wrong bone. No, I removed the right bone. Okay, just make sure you're using this bone, not the other one. So R Z. Okay, let's have a look here. Maybe we'll, we'll just tilt this head around by just going R Z and just having her face this way. Okay, yeah, I think that's legit enough. <laughs> yeah, okay, let me just bring this elbow down a little bit as well. It's gonna poke out a little bit more than her other outfit, um, but that's okay. i right, bring this leg a little bit forward. Nah. Maybe move, move this a little bit that way. Ah, killing me, this one. You can also move the camera a little bit. We can try seeing if that would help. So we just go to view, camera view, and let me just bring this camera a little bit this way. Maybe that would help out a little bit. But sometimes it might help out a little bit. Okay, cool. Let me just turn on camera to view again. Okay, so I'll just move this target this way. So she's looking at the camera, but that will mean that she needs to kind of rotate back this way. And maybe a little bit down. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. That's good. Okay, so now let me just, sorry, let me also add a floor as well. So let me add a mesh plane. The reason why is we just wanna avoid clipping. So, or the legs. So let me just run posing this character here. It's gonna move you just like that a little bit. Just so it doesn't clip as much. Okay, um, okay, good enough, okay. <laughs> Let's not mess about around too much, so. Okay, so we'll just call this one done. If you want to pose it more, you can. Um, I'm just doing this a little bit more quickly because, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna move her eye target this way as well because she should be looking that way. If we just open material preview mode, um, you can also see where her, her pupils are. Never mind, she doesn't have pupils in this outfit, I forgot. Um, but yeah, her, her pupils are, would be kind of facing that way. Okay, so let me just grab the gun. So how do we pose the gun? Good question. So basically, we just need to put the gun in the right place. So I'm just gonna click on the skeleton. Whenever you're moving the gun, please remember that you should move the skeleton, not the mesh, okay? So never move the mesh, okay? Otherwise, you'll get weird deformations. Okay, and we're just gonna put it in the hand, okay? So let me just um, kind of put it in the hand here. I'm gonna click on the gun skeleton. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it here. I wanna rotate it in the x-axis, just kind of match that. 
And then, yeah, I think that's a goodish position. Let me just also adjust the hand a little bit. And if you want to hide some of these controls, if there's too many, that's okay. So you can just hide the deformation controls, hide the main FK controls, and we can just see the main IK controls here. Um, let me just, okay, I'll bend this more. Kind of have it here. And then I'll kind of put the gun in the correct place. Okay, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to hide the guns. So just by turning off this collection here called guns. Okay, so just for a brief second, because I really want to get the hands in the correct kind of pose first. Okay, so I'm just going to go RX and I'm just going to get the finger controls. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm just turning on the finger controls here from this panel. You can see that we have these black bones now here. So Basically, if you wanted to close all these fingers at the same time, so if we just we can shift select all these uh, bones here. You can see them, and I can shift select the one for the for the thumb here. And you just go R X. You can see that this isn't working, right? We just go R Y. This is still not working. R Z still not working. So what do we do? We change this to local, and we can now go R X, and we can bend it in the local axis, right? So we can just bend this all. And you can see we, we can just close the fingers just like this. Okay, so uh, the other one might not, the finger might not need to be bent so much, honestly. Um, in fact, we don't need to bend the fingers, all the fingers nearly so much. So let me just reset that and I'll just grab these four bones, RX, maybe just a little bit. And we'll just bend this one a little bit more than the rest, RX. We'll progressively bend these. So Rx and Rx. Okay, so because this one should bend the most, this one should bend, bend the second least, uh, second most, third most, and fourth most. Okay, let me just move this hand a little bit. So I just wanna move this one hand here. Okay. Um, what is this bone here anyway? Control fist. I have no clue what that is. <laughs> okay, um, now let us grab the gun back again. So I'm gonna turn on the gun collection and I am just gonna bring it, I wanna click on this bone, this this um, skeleton here. I'll put it around there. I'm gonna put it under her arm actually, maybe. Okay, now let me just move this one down to match. Her finger should be on the trigger and I'll just now start bending these to fit. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide this gun skeleton because it's kind of getting in the way and annoying me. I'm gonna hide this gun skeleton and I'm just gonna go RX. I'm gonna go RX. Okay, R, I can just go, I can go RZ to bend this finger bone like that. And Rx just to bend it down a little bit. R, Rx, okay, around that, okay. And go Rx, and I can go Rx just to bend around that trigger. And if I want more finger controls, I can probably even drag in this finger deform right here. And I can just probably even just Rx just this part here, a little bit more around that. Okay, let's look at it from the camera. If I just turn off these finger deform controls, in fact, I can turn off overlays altogether with this button here. And yeah, that's looking okay. That hand is in the wrong place though. It is kind of annoying me. And this is too low either. So I need to fix a little bit, a few things. Okay, um, but before we do that, one quick thing, let me just unhide this, um, let me unhide the gun skeleton. So, why is the translocator still on? Um, yeah, okay, wait, let me just turn on this again. Okay, and now let me just click on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the skeleton. So make sure you've selected the, the gun skeleton, not the actual gun mesh, okay? So we can just click on the gun skeleton and we can just go, Add a bone constraint, so add bone constraint, oh sorry, not bone constraint, 
add a object constraint and we'll go child of. So I can go child of and I can target the Sombra rig. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on, I clicked on this eyedropper here and I'm looking for the uh, armature met Sombra, okay? And now we can also just type in a bone. So I'm gonna attach it to the uh, hand uh, ik.r, okay? And I'm just gonna press set inverse. So now we can see that this, this is not really in the right place. So I'm just gonna adjust a few things. So I'm just gonna click on this hand here first. And I'm just going to bring it up because really it should be more like this. And this, uh, this, um, this elbow here should be more point this way. Okay, um, let me just use shift tilde and WASD to move around to enter fly mode. And let me just move this. I really want it to be further out. And it really should just be bent like that. If I look from the camera view, more like this. Okay, and I want this shoulder bent like this. Uh, more like that. I want this to be bent over here. And I'm not gonna be trying to like match it exactly. I know that this is not never gonna match the Overwatch thing because this rig just doesn't have that capability, but it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna try my best. And that's all anyone can ask for. Okay, we can, we can also edit, add the deformation bones here. So if you're gonna use the deformation bones, please um, select two bones at once. Um, or three bones, even three bones, this bone here as well. Oh God. Let me just turn local off, let me turn on global. So they move all at once. No, that is not working either way. Um, no, nah, let's just leave it like that, I think. Okay, so let me just turn off the deformation bones and let me turn on the finger controls. I'm just going to bend this, this wrist a little bit more. So how they do it is this first finger usually should be bent. If I just zoom in here, I click on the thing. So this first finger should probably be bent Rx. Oh wait, let me just turn on local again. Rx, R, well no, it should be more like Rx, 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 Rx. Wait, okay, um, is that matching it? Not really. Let me go R, X, R, Y to bend this a little bit. Okay, I'm just moving this a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I think this will do, I think. Maybe I'll move her head a little bit across. I know in the actual reference, her head is further, her hand is further, but we want to still get that bend and it's not really possible, not really too possible. Um, let me also just move these two maybe. Maybe I can just move these two a little bit. Just like downwards a little bit. Okay, that'll fix that. Okay, so now the magic of the, um, of the bone of the child of constraint is now when we adjust this <coughs> this uh, hand bone this hand ik bone you can see that the gun kind of adjusts to match which is really really cool because we don't need to like mess around with it which is really good even after kind of like yeah <coughs> 
So let me just bring this elbow up a little bit with G. And I think, I think that should be okay. I think we'll call that. <laughs> we'll call that done-ish. I mean, not perfect, but we're not aiming for perfect. Okay, so now let me just, uh, let me just actually do the lighting and everything and add the environment in. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna delete this plane because that was just used for posing just to make sure that she doesn't overlap with that. Like her legs don't like clip through the floor. So now le let's actually append the library. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to double click on this pose, this pose Paris. Okay, so you can see here that we have all this stuff here. We have the light, the rooms, and the sky dome. Okay, so we don't want the camera here. We want everything else. So when we're, when we're appending stuff in Blender, we want to append a collection. Okay, so a collection is pretty much this folder here thing. So these folders that you see that have things inside of it. So if we imported the lights collection, what do you think we'd append? We'd append some lights. So we want to append all these, but we can't just append these one at a time. So what are we going to do? We're just going to right click here, add a new collection. So right click, new collection. Hello, what the heck? Okay, right click, right click, new collection. And you should see this, this, there's this new collection here. I'm just going to name this whole environment just for the sakes of uh, uh, organizing things. I'm going to drag the sky dome underneath it this lights collection and I'm gonna shift select the room collection and I'm gonna also drag it under that. Okay, so now all you need to do is you just need to go file control S, okay, to save this. Okay, so from here, what you can do is you can just uh, go back to this here and you can just go uh, file append, okay? I'm gonna go file append and I'm gonna append the Overwatch Paris library. I'm gonna go collection and I'm gonna go whole environment. Okay, so I appended that whole environment as a new collection right here. It's actually under the Sombra collection. So um, I might just uh, drag this whole environment collection right here. And let me just drag it up and just put it under the scene collection instead because I wanna separate this. So this is a Sombra model and this is the environment model. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just going to um, let me select this camera. So I'm just going to select this camera here and I'm just going to, uh, control to also select this collection here. So I can just right click here and select objects to also select that there. Okay. So now I'm just going to move Sombra to fit this model, uh, to, to, to go inside here. The reason why is because Generally, I won't do this because usually you should leave the model at the origin. However, in this case, this uh, the materials were giving me problems. So I'm just going to try moving this, uh, moving just the the um, Sombra and the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just using shift tilde to enter fly mode. And I, to speed up, I just scrolled in and out with my mouse. I scrolled in with my mouse while I'm in this mode. So now I can just use WASD to navigate really easily. Okay, so I'm just going to move my Sombra model, <laughs> it's kind of annoying, but if we just zoom in here, let me slow myself down by scrolling backwards on my mouse. Okay, I'm just going to move her into here, just into here. Okay, I'm gonna use shift tilde and I am in the library. Good, good, good. Okay, I wanna be on the other side of the table. So I'm just going to shift tilde W I'm gonna slow down a little bit so I can actually, so I'm just scrolling in with my mouse so I can just navigate it. And you can see how useful it is for navigating huge environments, which is the fly mode. Okay, so now I can just go RZ, oh, oops, let me, and you can see how when I went RZ, it's rotating in, in its own local axis, which is really weird. So what I should do instead is I should just go to global and just go RZ and you can see, wait, what? <laughs> Never mind. Um, I thought that would work, but um, we can do that later. Let me just, First, um, move this to this side here. I can just move the camera as well. It doesn't really matter even if the camera is just off. Uh, so let me just move this here. And okay, something like that. It might be because I'm using median point. Individual origins, R, Z, nope. Um, 
I don't know. This should kind of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was happening. Okay, I just changed to median point and this was global. And now when I go RZ, you can see that it works perfectly fine. Okay, and we still have the same angle. And now let me just put her in front of the table quite a bit. Okay, so I'll just look at it from a different angle. I'll just go G, oops, what am I doing? I'll just go G, Y, G. I'm just gonna move her like this over here. And now let me just use numpad zero and I'll just look from the camera view. And you can see that we have a single similar angle to what we had before. If I just go, oops, yeah. If I just go R, Z, just to rotate it in the Z axis a little bit, we just put her in front of the table. I wanna put some distance in between her and the table a little bit. And we can just go like this. And yes, there we have it. Okay. Um, now we can adjust the focal length of the camera itself. So I can just click on the camera. Um, I might make a new collection. I'll right click new collection. I'll just call this uh, camera and lighting because now we'll just do the lighting and I'll drag the camera underneath it. And now we can just adjust this camera, uh, this camera focal length. So basically uh, the key thing with this camera focal length is just for an equivalent distance, because you can move the camera away and closer to the model. So we can, we can always adjust to get the same kind of looks like distance, okay? So visual distance basically from the model. However, if you adjust this focal length in, you can see the environment even from further away looks really big, okay? So bigger focal length equals bigger environment. That's something you can say. And smaller focal length equals smaller environment, okay? So I want a kind of, I kind of want to see the environment quite a lot here because there's a beautiful environment here. So I'm just going to use a smaller focal length until I can see kind of what I want. And now I can just uh, kind of zoom in with my camera here. I can turn on camera to view and I can kind of just adjust my angle, like really dial in my angle that I want. Okay, so I can just kind of, um, I can put her to the side if I wanted. <laughs> Not really. I'm going to put her kind of in the center-ish. Um, Kind of go like that, I forget with this. No, I kind of like her just in the middle. I want to bend this up a little bit. Maybe something like this. Okay, something like that. Yeah, something like that, it looks okay. Okay, cool. So now let me just turn off camera to view so I don't lose this angle. And now I am just going to, um, I'm going to just make the, do the lighting. So how I'm going to do the lighting is I'm just going to drag from the top left there. So I'm going to click and drag to make one. So you can just click and drag in the top left corner and drag to the right and you'll get a new tab. Um, so I'm also going to turn on a thing right here. I'm going to turn on render region and crop to region. And now I'm just gonna make this bigger until I can see the, the rendered view and I can just turn on this rendered view right here. And you can see that we have this, okay, which is good. Um, now, let me just turn this one to solid mode instead. So we can just save performance. And now we can start doing the lighting, okay? So I'm just gonna turn off the whole environment first. Um, we can see that we already had this HDRI um, that METS has brought in. In fact, I'm just not going to use these nodes at all. Uh, in fact, what, no, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, well, first of all, let me change this from EV to cycles and GPU compute. Okay, and this is probably where you wanna just turn on simplify as well. Let me turn on simplify and let me just turn off max subdivisions to zero. And so this is cycles, GPU compute, that's all good. Okay, and also just something to help you out is if you go edit preferences system, just make sure you're on optics if you support it. Otherwise, go to CUDA. Okay, but if you have optics, just try, if you have this option optics, just enable your GPU like this and just turn on optics. Okay, so um, let me just also go to make a new general shading tab. And I'm just going to go to the world tab here instead. And I'm also, I'm just going to I'm going to use a, or I'm not even going to use this all together, so I could just delete all the nodes. But what I can do is I can just duplicate this to get world 01. I can just delete all this and 
I can delete this and delete this, delete this. And we can just connect background into surface here. And we don't need this texture coordinate and mapping. So yeah, that'll be good. And we just go layout, I oh, sorry, to my layout tab here. And you can see now that we have, so basically you can just create, if you wanted to create this from scratch, you, you would just usually normally use use nodes and then it would create this thing for you. But um, since he already had something there, that's why I'm just gonna use this, not black body. I said background and we can just go background to surface and we'll just turn this to zero, okay? So now you can see that we have zero light in our scene, which is exactly what we want because we wanna be lighting this ourselves. So let's get started. So I can just turn off overlays here as well, just so, so we don't see overlays. And now we can actually just start adding in lights. So just make sure you're in object mode here. And I'm just gonna go shift A and I'm gonna turn on, I'm gonna start adding lights. So I like to start off usually with, uh, with, um, with area lights. So just one way, one thing, if you're away from the um, axis here, you just wanna just go shift right mouse button to move your 3D cursor. Otherwise, when you create lights, they'll just start from the, the origin, which will be super far away. Okay, so let's start with this. Okay, so we're gonna start by kind of lighting this up. So I don't really have a set method of how I light. Um, basically, I just light, I just light in different ways. The main thing that you do need to know when lighting is try not to like do something like this. Try not to light up your model all with one light, okay? Otherwise it's gonna look really, really flat. If you look, if you do something like this, or if, even worse, if you have the light like facing the model like that, and you just light it up, this looks very, very flat. It looks boring, it's just not exciting, okay? So don't light your models like this, okay? So the key thing is you really want to preserve the shadow as much as possible. So that usually involves lighting from the opposite side, um, and like just, yeah. So you don't need to follow like three point lighting or anything. We're in a 3D environment, right? <laughs> if you're in a 3D environment and you're not restricted by the amount of lights you can use like in like real life, I'm not saying that they're not good, they're not good, but uh, just you, you have the freedom to light as many lights as you wish, as close as you wish, as small, as infinitely bright. So really there's no need to just restrict yourself. Just try try different things is my, my suggestion. Okay, so I wanna see how I can kind of get this done. Okay, so I can just also adjust the brightness here. And also something to keep in mind is that you can adjust this size a lot, okay? So you don't need to keep with this size here. You can also scale the lights as well. So you can scale it by going SZ, SX and stuff like that. So you can make it narrower, just adjust how the light looks. You don't need to stick with something, okay? So I'm just gonna go SX to scale it in the X axis, SZ to scale this in the Z axis. I think this is a good light for the hood maybe. I like starting with the rim lights first because I don't know, I just I just like the look of them. They make my light look good. And I just press Shift D there to duplicate the light. But honestly, I'm just gonna make a new light here. I'm gonna make a new area light. And let me just play with this brightness here. So if it's really bright, it's gonna look like that. If it's not so bright, it's gonna look like that. I can also adjust the angle that it's pointing towards. So I can just have a look at that. It actually looks pretty good. If I just point it in the completely opposite direction, it kind of gives me this look here, which is really cool. And I can just play with that. Just, just rotating that light around. Um, I kind of like this, this look here though. Like look how mysterious that looks, right? And look at how good it looks. Um, at least in my opinion. <laughs> um, and we're putting these in the, I clicked on the camera and lighting uh, collection. That's why all the lights are going in the camera and lighting collection. Okay, so now we can just continue lighting. So if I just want this to be, so don't be afraid to point your lights in, in exactly the opposite direction. It's okay. Like you really want to just experiment and just see how it looks because it might look good, it might look rubbish, doesn't matter, just try it out, okay? And try different sizes, try different sh shapes. The shapes really don't actually matter, um, really, honestly, because uh, unless you're having some reflection in the eye, it doesn't matter, but just just try different things and just see how it looks. 
RX. And in real life, usually we don't have softboxes that are this big, which are one meter. Um, and I find that using two soft lights actually just makes your model look really terrible. Um, so I like to just play around with that a little bit. Okay, so let me just have a look at this light here. I think it's too soft and just, it just, just, I could try that. I don't mind that, but I would really like to rotate that a little bit and just see how I can, a different kind of look I can get. Um, Mm, I don't really like that light. <laughs> let me try it again. Okay, so let me just try this again. Let me try pointing. I'm just, I'm just rotating this in the Z axis here just to um, kind of RX, or Y, RX, come on. Maybe just to get that side. Yeah, I can kind of get with that. I'm also going to change the color of these lights because I, well, it really, it depends. Like it doesn't really matter, but I kind of like this purplish look. Like just a little bit tinged purple. Like this kind of tealish look. Um, no, actually I like it white. I'm gonna keep it white for now. Um, but I this other light here, maybe I'll I'll try that purplish. Yeah, I'll try purple here. And let me just it just gives the impression of night, basically. Um, let me also try playing around the the brightness here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now let me just bring in some other lights. Let me try bring in like a, a um, so what I've tried doing recently is I've tried using point lights, like really dim point lights, just to kind of light up. So just really low radius, so like 0 0.04 and something like 0 0.1 watts. Okay, so these can really help if I just light up like just something that isn't being lit, lit at all. So maybe like her face here, we can just put one like close up. I can kind of just give in that mystery without lighting up everything else, which is something interesting that I've, that I've been trying. I can shift D just to duplicate this. I can bring it down just to like highlight points of interest without like lighting up all the others. I can try 200 milliwatts. Let me try just experimenting. 0.1. I can try even just changing the color of these. Kind of like them white though, honestly. Um, and I can just, you can light like this. Um, yeah, that looks good. Um, let me just try adding one more spotlight here. It actually looks surprisingly good. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So, and you can also like, like it lights up the top of her hood, which I really kind of like. Has a nice kind of look to that. And it makes her shine basically. Okay, yeah, I can get with that. Um, you can also look at the individual effect of lights. So for example, this one here will light that much. This one here will light up just the leg. This one here will light up the leg. So you can look at the individual contribution of each of these lights and how it looks. So this one here, right, with this camera, this is the area light. Uh, this is the, the rim light. This is the rim light here. This, these are the two rim lights. I probably wanna add one more rim light just to the side, just to highlight her leg there. I really want to highlight her leg from the other angle. So R, Z, maybe I'll just try having this one here. 
RZ, RZ. Maybe I'll just put it in between. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit more. I want to get more light. You can also use multiple lights. I'll just scale this down right here. Um, mm, I want to use sharp, sharpish thing, and I just want to bring up that brightness there. And I want to change that to a different color light. Maybe this teal look that we're going going with. Um, <clears throat> I'll bring this in the middle here as well. Let me just bring down that brightness and I really just want it focused, just like right here. Okay. Just something like that, just the light in between the legs. I don't know, <laughs> I'm just having fun, just experimenting with this, so yeah. Okay, um, that's good. Now let me bring back the other lights. That looks decent-ish. I just don't like that spotlight a little bit. That spotlight is a little bit irking me. So it's okay on the top, but it's just not quite giving me the look I want because it's kind of lighting up that arm a little bit too much, which is, uh, it's okay. I don't mind it, but I, I don't prefer it. Um, let me try spotlight and I can light her from the side as well. Okay, so I'm just, just moving this and I'm rotating it in the Z axis. And let me just try this out. I just wanna see what would this look like? Uh, let me just trim down this size here. What do we even need light right now? We need light, maybe just across this area here. Let me see if I can do that. You can also turn on like show cone as well just to see where it's lighting. So yeah, let me just turn off show cone and let me just turn the brightness up. That's just blasting it from that side. Um, RZ, okay. And you can also rotate it around the 3D curve. So if you just put like her body here and if we just tried uh, changing this to 3D cursor and we just go R Z, we can rotate around, wait, come on. I, if, I, if we just put it on her body here, we go R Z, then we can rotate around there. So that's one way we can, you can kind of rotate a light, which is interesting. Um, R Z. No, actually, I kind of, I kind of just think that she needs a little bit more light. <laughs> Let me just grab another point light, and I'll just drag it down to zero point one, and I'll just light up here maybe. With the still image, it doesn't matter how close the lights are because it's not going to be animated anyway. So if we just bring down this radius, it's going to bring down the bright. It's going to bring up the brightness. So. Yeah, and just bringing it really close kind of like emphasizes different points. You can see how her hand here is just really being emphasized by that. Okay, and just one more thing. Yeah, I think that, that'll be okay. And I just one more thing. I'm just going to add in a point light. No, I'm going to add in a shift A. I'm going to add in a sphere. So I'm just going to add in a UV sphere here. I'm just going to right click shade smooth. I'm going to scale it right down. I'm going to put it in her hand just cause I think it looks cool. It looks like she's levitating something. I don't know. And let me just turn off, let me just turn it on to individual origins. Let me just scale it down like, I don't know, something like this. I'll put it in her hand and let me just go to the shading tab and I'll just give it some emission. And then I'll just give it uh, some, so I'll just go back to object here and I'll just uh, make sure, Make sure that I've clicked on the um, thing. So let me just go. I pressed. I, I clicked on this 
uh, skeleton and I press numpad dot. So the dot on my numpad, okay? Just to zoom in on it, the selected thing. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this, press new, and then let me just add in some emission. I'll add in some, let's add in some, let's see how does, it, how does it look with this. Let me add in just two. Now go to layout. May I'll keep it white, I think. I think I'll just keep this white. Uh, Cause that probably looks the best to me. And then to kind of help that along, usually the emission isn't really enough. And in fact, you should probably keep it at one and just use another light on top of it because that will really help your emission. So this is taught to me by Benj's archive. So if we just bring this in, we can bring it close by, we can just reduce the brightness. I'll just reduce the brightness just a ton, so it's just like that. Maybe even one, one watt. Yeah, and I think that's okay. So yeah, I think we're pretty much almost done. So let me just turn on the environment, and let's see, do we need to adjust anything? Okay, I don't know. I literally don't know what's wrong with that floor. It happened to me in my other render, and yeah, I just literally don't know how to fix it. But sometimes, like from here, you'll see that it's too bright, so you can adjust the lights as necessary. And what I would also do is, is I would also check like why this floor isn't working. Um, I would go to the shading tab and I would just check it out, uh, but I just really don't know why it's not working because I have no clue. Um, if I change this to um, non-color, change this to non-color, change this to non-color, change this to non-color, change this to sRGB. Yeah, I still don't know what's wrong with the floor. <laughs> I'm just confused. I don't know what's wrong with this floor. I think it's a little bit screwy. So I won't worry about it too much because it happened in my other one and I couldn't fix it. So from here, we're just going to render out. Um, we can add some, I could just splash a a light in the background, actually. I think I would just splash a light in the background. Um, I'll just face it towards up, up, and I'll just uh, throw it to power like 200, I guess. I'm just checking how I should do this. Um, just to brighten up this environment a little bit, because it's a little bit too dark. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this light here. I'm gonna dim it down a little bit, maybe just a little bit, just like this. Just something subtle. Yeah, just give it a little bit of a white tone. I think that's good enough there. Okay, so let's just start rendering. So wait, before we render, we're just gonna add some, a little bit of into it. So I'm just going to change my depth of field, turn it on. I'm just going to turn on viewport display limits. And let me also just uh, bring down the distance here. So basically I just turned on viewport display limits because this shows you where the camera is focusing. And you can see it's focusing right there, which is obviously wrong. So we want to focus it right in front right here. And then the background goes into blur. Um, we can just, if we want a little bit less bokeh, we can kind of just turn this up a little bit. I think, I think um, something like 3.1 should work though. Before we do that, we can also just go to the rendering here. We can go color management and we can just turn on the exposure, right? We can turn up the exposure a little bit or down. In fact, let me just turn off this light here. Mm. Yeah, I can turn off that light and we can just change the exposure from here. So we can kind of go up or down. I think a little bit more moody kind of fits it. And gamma, we can kind of adjust that as well. Um, but I don't think we do need to adjust that too much. Okay, and we can also try medium high contrast, we can, which can help sometimes. In this case, I really don't think it does. So I'm just going to go um, none. And I think we're gonna render out
Okay, so uh, let me just go to the render sample, the render sampling. So I'm gonna open up the sampling tab. I'm gonna change this to 500 just for this render because it's a single image. Otherwise I would probably use 40 or something. Okay, you don't wanna use something too crazy. Okay, we can turn on the denoiser. Um, yeah, and we can use optics, that's fine. Albedo and normal. Yeah, that's fine. And now we can just go to the uh, render. So we'll just go to uh, render, render image. So it's all rendered out, but we just wanna do a little bit of basic compositing and probably put it into Photoshop as well. So let me just do that. So what we can do is let me just go to the um, compositing. So I'm just gonna play, press plus general compositing. And what we can do here is we can just click on this use nodes and let me just change this to an image editor. So I'll change this to an image editor right here. I'll click on this middle icon here. So this picture icon right here, I'm gonna change it to render result. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open this up and so we can see it. And now we're just gonna try some stuff. So what I can do here is I can just go shift A search and I'm gonna find a RGB curves node. Okay, so I just find an RGB curves node. I'm gonna place it in the middle here. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to film like, and I'm just also gonna make, I'm gonna duplicate this node. So I'm gonna shift D and put it in here as well. Okay, so uh, what I can do here now is I can also just, I can bump up this one here. So just to brighten up everything and to kind of overshoot some stuff. Let me see, see if I can just bring this down here. Does that actually help? Wait, wait. So you can actually mute nodes. So you can see with and without. So you can actually see that we have two curves node here, curves nodes here. And we are just blowing. So we're kind of, this first one is we just, we made a single point and we're just adjusting it upwards, okay? And the second one is we're making it darker again. So basically what we're doing here is we're kind of making the highlights brighter and then we're darkening the whole image again. So it's a little bit less. So let me just try this. So let me just press M, select the nodes, press M and you can see that the the lights are kind of being blown out a little bit, just, just with this, okay? so because we're, we're having this one here we're, we're, as the most, this point is closest to that side and we're kind of just bringing it up. The lights are being blown out a little bit, which is okay. In fact, I won't blow them out so much, maybe just something like that. Okay, and then, yes, yeah, so basically with and without, we can see that it looks a little bit better. I don't know if you could use just use a single RGB curves node here, um, but actually, no, you couldn't. So you can see here, like have a look at the, this light here, have a look at the, this light here, right? So we wanna blow this out a little bit and make it a little bit more film-like, I guess. Um, we could just press M and you can see that this kind of blows that light out, right? So it kind of it kind of, it kind of makes it a little bit more blown out. It's up to you. Uh, this is kind of like a style, stylistic look um, that I was taught to, um, taught by others. So yeah. And let me also just go shift A and let me just add a lens distortion node. Right, before I add a lens distortion node, I'm also gonna add in a glare node just to, uh, and I'm gonna change it to fog low. I'm gonna change it to high and change this threshold to, uh, wait, why can't you see it? So zero point, so this is zero, right? So you can see that it kind of, what it does, right? So you can see that it kind of makes everything just glow a lot more. Um, we can even bump this up, this size up, like to like nine, 10, and you can see it gives this dreamy, dreamy feel to the image. Well, we don't want everything to be blown out, uh, to be kind of glowing. So you, maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.04. So you can see that we kind of get this really stylized look that you, you were seeing in the image. It's probably a little bit too much though, so 0 0.0. 0 .0, 0 0.1, so the more we increase this, the less the image will be um, kind of, uh, so if we go 0 0.5, you can see that a lot, basically the glow is basically gone. So we 0 0.3, I guess, we try that. Or 0 
I think the style is look like looks good to me. Um, even 0 0.15 maybe. I'll try that. Or 0 0.1. How does 0 0.1 look again? I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I kind of like 0 0.1. It looks good in my eyes. Don't worry about this black texture. I, just, I really don't know what's going on with the environment from Uber Machine. Um, but this is just, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Um, now, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, now, we're just going to add in a lens distortion node just to finish it off. And I like to go really, really subtle with this. So if you went 0 0.1, let's, let's have a look what it looks like. Okay, so you can really see like when you use this effect too much, it just looks very weird and it distorts the whole image and it doesn't look great. Okay, so you want to be really, really subtle with this. You can even just do this in Photoshop, this part, but like 0 0.1, like 0 0.01, you can see that we've got like just a vague amount of it in some areas, right? You can barely even tell it's there, which is good. Like we don't want to be able to tell it's there. Like really, you just really don't want to tell it's there because otherwise if you have too much, it just looks really bad. So just 0 0.1 if you really want it. Oh yeah, wait, whoops, we forgot to hide, unhide the camera, the, the um, gun, that reminds me. Okay, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, let me just try to find this gun. Okay, so I just press dot, and yes, it is over there. So let me just bring this right back. Okay, so. Let me just bring it right back here. I'm just using fly mode with the shift tilde and I'm just gonna bring the gun into the correct position. Cause yeah. Okay. But basically you should have selected the gun there as well. So yeah. Okay, there we go. Let me just tilt it around and put it in the hand again. I was wondering where it was. Okay, something like that again. Let's just bring it in. R X R Y maybe. R Y. Uh, let me change this back to local R Y. Just clipping in the arm a little bit, so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit below that arm. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. Let me just render one more time. I'll save this. So we are finally done. So we've got all the compositing settings, and you can see <clears throat> that's basically how we can create this render right here. So yeah. It's, yeah, so it's just pretty nice. So if we just compare that to our original reference. So you can see we have this one against this one. So yeah, that's kind of how we do it. So that's how we create a render like this. So all you need to do here is just image save. And then I'll just save this as Sombra lighting tutorial new. And I'll just save image. And there's how we can create something amazing like this. So uh, thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime, Yan, out.